Hi there. Now, in this video, what I want to do is show you how we go about finding the shortest distance from a point, let's say with coordinates x1, y1, to a line L given by ax plus by plus c equals zero. That shortest distance, which I'll call d here, just put it in, it's going to be a perpendicular to the line. Let's say we could just call it d. D is given by this formula here. Now the proof is quite involved. It's going to take two screens up. So do make sure that you do take this video right to the end to see the final working. OK, well, first of all, let's take the line L and rearrange it to put it in the form y equals mx plus c. If I do that, I get y equals minus a over b times x and then minus c over b. Now the method we use might seem a bit strange at first but it does make the algebra a lot easier. What I'm going to do is draw a line through this point x1, y1 which is parallel to L. Something like this. And then I'm going to draw a line passing through the origin which is perpendicular then to both L and L1. In other words, parallel to the line here where we've got D on. So that's going to look something like that. And I'll label this point here as R and this point here as S. So what I'm going to do is find out what the coordinates of R and S are and then I'm going to use Pythagoras' theorem to get the distance SR which will be clearly the same as the length D. As I say, it makes the algebra a lot easier if I adopt this method. So since L and L1 are parallel, they're going to share the same gradient. In other words, minus A over B. So I'll just put that in, that the gradient of L and L1, well, that's going to be equal to minus A over B. And that's going to allow me then to work out this perpendicular gradient, the gradient of RS. We know that a perpendicular gradient is going to be the negative reciprocal of this gradient here. So in other words, we're going to get this is equal to B over A. And now I'm going to get the equation of L1. If I just put a intro here, the equation of L1 using y minus y1 equals m bracket x minus x1. So in the usual way, that's going to be y minus y1 equals m, the gradient, which we've now seen is minus a over b. And that's multiplied with x minus x1. And if I just border this off and remove the shortest distance formula, then if I multiply both sides of the equation by b, I end up with by minus by1 equals minus ax plus ax1. And then if I add by1 to both sides and divide by b, I end up with y as the subject. y would equal by1 plus ax1 minus ax and that's all divided by b. And I'm going to return to that equation later on so I'll just number it 1. Now next I want to get the equation of rs, that line passing through those two points, so that I can solve simultaneously between that equation rs and the line that we've just got now for L1. And that will enable me to find the coordinate of R. So let's just go to the equation RS. So I've got also RS. Its equation is going to be Y equals, and it'll be just MX, basically, the gradient times X because it passes through the origin. The gradient is b over a, so we're going to have y equals b over a times x. And I'm going to call that equation 2. And so for r, 
all I need to do is equate these two equations for y and I'll get the coordinates. So just put a note to that effect. So at r, if I set equation 2 equal to equation 1, then I get b over a times x equals what we have here in 1. In other words, b y1 plus a x1 minus a x and that's all divided by b. Now if I multiply both sides by a and b and when I get to this term minus a x it will be minus a squared x, add that to both sides as well, I'll end up with b squared x plus a squared x equals a b y 1 plus a squared x1. And by factorizing the left hand side here, I'd have x bracket b squared plus a squared. I can divide both sides by b squared plus a squared, leaving me with x, and that gives me x equals a times all of b y1 plus a x1, and that is all divided by a squared plus b squared. OK? So I've now got my x coordinate for r. And I can substitute this value here into equation 2 and get the corresponding y coordinate. So if I sub that in 2, let's just put a note here, sub in 2, then we get y equals and if I multiply this with b over a, the a's will cancel and I'm just left with b times by1 plus ax1 and that's all divided by a squared plus b squared. And so I now have my y coordinate for r. So, therefore, we've got the coordinates of r are going to be the x and y values that we got here. Now we need to get the coordinates for s. So it's going to be solving the simultaneous equations between the line rs and the line l. So what we've got then, if just put it up here, is for s all I need to do is substitute equation 2 then into the equation here for L. So just say sub 2 in L. And that will give us AX plus, and then we've got B times Y here. So that's going to be B squared over A times X, and then plus C, and that equals 0. And if I multiply throughout by a and factorize these two terms, I'm therefore going to have a squared plus b squared, and all of that is multiplied with x, and then I've got plus ac, and it equals 0. And if I make x the subject, now we end up with x equaling minus ac, all divided by a squared plus b squared. And that's the x-coordinate then for s. To get the y coordinate for s, all I need to do is substitute this into, say, equation 2 here. If I do that, let's just put a note here, sub in equation 2, then I end up with y equaling minus b times c all over a squared plus b squared. And so therefore, I've got the coordinates of s. They're the x and y values that I've got here. And so now I have the coordinates of R and S. And I can use Pythagoras' theorem to get that length, which will give me the length D. So in other words, D is going to be equal to the square root of the difference between the x-coordinate squared plus the difference between the y-coordinate squared, a method you should already be familiar with. So 
To save time, I've written it out here, that that distance d is equal to rs, which is the root then of the difference between the x coordinates squared plus the difference between the y coordinates squared. And then simplifying this, I notice that they all have exactly the same denominator, a squared plus b squared. And so if I'm squaring that, then they can all go over one common denominator, a squared plus b squared, all squared. And if I do that, you'll notice that I've tidied up the top here as well. Because over these two terms here, I can pull out a as a common factor. So I'm going to get minus a then multiplied with the c here, and then by1 plus ax1 from this bracket. And similarly, when it comes to these two terms, I can pull out negative b as a common factor. So I've got negative b, and that just leaves me with the c here, and then I've got plus by1 plus ax1, and that's all squared. And to simplify this further, across the top here, I've got a common factor of c plus by1 plus ax1, all squared. So if I pull that out as a common factor between both these two terms on the top, then I'm just going to be left with a squared, remember we're squaring that negative a, plus b squared. So factorising that then gives me this. And now I notice that I've got a common factor here, a squared plus b squared. I can cancel that out with the a squared plus b squared all squared here. And so square rooting top and bottom gives me this. Now, because a square root could be plus or minus, we're referring now to a distance which has to be positive. So therefore, what I've done here is I've put mod signs around here so we can take the positive value. Now this will come out negative dependent on values like a, b and c and the coordinates x1 and y1. So always take the positive value. And there's the formula. So I hope that's been of some use to you and uh, you can see your way through that.